Hi. Today, we're going to take a look at how to create your own drift presets for the move. Now, the move has a few built in synth engines, namely Drum Rack, the Drum Sampler, Drift, and Wavetable. And it has a bunch of uh, built in effects plugins, all of which are also built into Ableton Live. Now, it's currently not possible to make Wavetable presets. Ableton say this is because wavetables can get very complicated and can be a burden on the limited CPU power of the move. But hopefully they can figure out a path to unlock that because I think it would be really nice to have basically any waveform that you could imagine on the move. But as it stands, we can create presets for both Drift and the Drum Rack and I believe the Drum Sampler. So let's get started. As a bit of a disclaimer, the move preset creation in live currently needs a little manual setup. The feature is pretty much hidden and is likely considered experimental and could cause errors on either Ableton Live itself or on your move. So take that as you will. That said, all of this is documented on Ableton's websites, including the required configuration files and preset templates. I've got links to all of that below in the description. So I think it's safe to say that uh, they think it's at least ready to talk about and play around with. But of course, your mileage may vary. And this is all subject to change in the future. Hopefully in an updated version of live, this will be baked in and all the templates will be available and everything will be ready to go. But right now we need to do a little bit of legwork and um, do some manual setup. So move and I believe note use a new preset file format called the ABL preset bundle. And to enable saving this new preset format, we need to add a setting to lives options.txt file. And unless you're a bit of a power user or have had to work around certain quirks in live in the past, you likely don't have an options.txt file. So how do we get this set up? On macOS, it lives in this directory. And a quick way to get to the library folder is to hold down option while the finders go menu is open. On Windows, this lives in the following directory. And a quick way to get to that folder is by entering percent app data percent into your Explorer address bar. Now, once you're here, you'll see all of the Ableton Live versions you either have or used to have installed. Just go into the current version. It's usually the biggest number. In my case, that is 12.1.1 at the time of recording. Now we can create a new text file called options.txt, and you can open it in your favorite text editor. Notepad is fine for this. And we can add the following line, save and close the file. I've included this line in the description, include it as is, including the little hyphen at the beginning, put it all on its own line, and you should be ready to go. And you shouldn't have to do this again when new versions of live come out. The options file will get copied automatically. And hopefully this setting will become default in a future version. Now we can open up live and make some move presets. Okay, so we're now in live and we won't immediately see any changes based on our options settings. So to create a drift preset, I've made things a little easy here by pulling in all the move compatible instruments into a couple of collections. So I have the instruments and I have all the effects that are available. These are the seven built in Ableton effects, which we can use on the move. And these are all the instrument types that we can use on the move, or at least are available. Like I said, we can't use wavetable just yet. So to create a move preset, we first take an instrument rack which will act as our main plugin wrapper. We will create a second instrument rack inside of the first one. And this one will contain all of the macros and will contain our instrument. So we can pull in drift as the instrument on the main rack. And then we can add a couple effects that we would like to use. 
Let's go with the classic combination of a delay. And this goes on the outer most uh, instrument rack. We'll add the delay and we'll add a reverb. Now I could save this as it is, as a new instrument, and it would act as a default drift. So we can find out if our options are working by right clicking on the leftmost instrument rack, the container. And you'll see at the bottom of this menu, export as move slash note preset. We choose that. It'll pull up a save dialogue. I made one earlier. And we can just create um, default drift. Save that. And there we go. That's saved as a, as a new plugin. But that's not very exciting. It's not very interesting, is it? Because first of all, it's just a basic drift, which is available on Move itself. And there's no macros assigned to any of the drift features. So if we were to load it onto the move, we wouldn't be able to control any of the options that are available. These macros are only available to drift. We can't add macros for delay and reverb or any of the other effects, but these come with their own default um, mappings on move. For instance, the delay timing, the feedback amount, the dry wet, um, various filtering. But if we wanted to make any customizations to our effects, we would have to do this right here before we export it to the move. For instance, if I wanted to make it a ping pong delay. And indeed on reverb, various settings are available on move as default macros, such as pre-delay, the size and decay, the dry wet, um, various filter and uh, diffusion effects. But if you wanted to adjust any chorusing or these diffuse and reflect options, we would have to make those changes right here. We wouldn't be able to adjust them again on the move. Now, additionally, there are actually up to 16 macros available on an instrument rack. However, there is currently no way on the move to access any macros beyond the first eight. So bear that in mind when you want to make any macro assignments. The name of the preset that shows up on the move will be whatever this outermost instrument rack is named. So the preset we just created will show up on the move as instrument rack, which isn't exactly what we want. So I can open this up and change it to something more interesting like, uh, let's see, custom pad. And we can close that again. Now let's make a drift pad. If I just play it right now, it's the basic setting with a bit of delay. Let's turn down the delay a little bit and reverb. Now we want to make a pad, so let's increase the attack, increase our release. Decay and sustain are pretty good as they are. There we go. We can modify the filter a little bit. Maybe add some envelope to that. Now we should probably decrease the number of voices that Drift is using, just to save some processing space on the move. I'm not entirely sure if the version of Drift on move um, can go up to 32 voices, but I imagine it can try at least. So let's set it to eight, a bit more reasonable. And let's see, these other settings are sounding good. Maybe we can drop the sub octave on the secondary filter a little bit.
And I like the default os the default uh, oscillator settings, but I could assign these to macros and we can customize them on the fly on the device. So I can assign the oscillator type to our first macro, oscillator shape to the second macro. Let's see what else we can do. We will assign the detune to macro three. And it might be fun to assign noise volume to another macro. And I'm using up a lot of my macro slots here. So let's see, on macro five and six, I want to assign the filters. So the main filter and the filter resonance. The defaults sound nice, but it can be fun to play with those when you're performing. And the other two settings, let's see. I think normally, I think to keep things simple, I'll assign macro seven to the attack and macro eight to release. Unfortunately, I'm out of slots now, so I can't also adjust the um, envelope two. But what I could do is just, um, let's see, we can assign the filter to envelope one. So it'll at least be, um, so the filter will at least be related to the main envelope and we can still tweak it a little bit. What I am going to do though is, yeah, adjust the pressure to the filter, onto the filter a little bit, so we can modulate we can modulate the filter using aftertouch on the moves pads. It's also velocity settings, which are fine. And yeah, all these other default settings are fine. And now we have and we have a nice uh, a nice pad. Maybe we can turn down the sub a little bit. Now we can get into our other effects. Turn up the delay. Maybe slow down the delay a little bit. We can increase the reverb. At least the default settings for the reverb. That sounds pretty good. Additionally, now that I, I have to move plugged in and connected to live as a live controller. So if I were to select the instrument rack here and touch the pads, the macro assignments by default get attached to, um, to the move here. So we can practice and we can test out and see if the macro assignments that we've created um, make sense and work for us. Which, you know, I think they do. Set all these back to their defaults. And there we go. There is our custom drift preset. So now I can export that as a preset bundle. It defaults to the name that I named the instrument rack. So custom pad, and I can click save there. Now on our web browser, we can go to move.local since my move is connected to the Wi-Fi, and you should be familiar with the screen for pulling down recordings and pulling down your live sets, but we can go to presets. You can see the, a few of the presets I was uh, testing out and we can go to upload. 
And in our desktop, we can select the new preset that we created, custom pad, open that. It automatically uploads and there it's available on our move. So now back on the move, we can create a new empty set. And I'm gonna select this fourth track, that's fine. And if I change the selected instrument and go back and in our instrument picker, we scroll down to user presets. And then we can see all the presets which I've created. And we can go to custom pad, which is the instrument we just made. Select that and it shows up. And then I can play it right on the move. And all of the macros that we created show up right here. So I can change the oscillator wave. Detune the sub a little bit. Add some noise. and all of the settings that we created map just fine. And the customizations to our reverb and delay show up on here. So we did all these. These are customized, but if you wanted to use one of the built-in settings, we can just easily select the delay presets and use that instead. Be hard to hard to tell a little bit, but there we go. It sounds kind of glitchy. And there we go. There's our custom preset. And maybe let's see if we uh, customize it further on the move. We can uh, select it, go to options, and save preset. And that'll make a copy that we can choose from in the future. Additionally, if we were to look at the move.local for our presets, we refresh this page. The duplicate that we made will show up here, but we can't download it from this presets page. However, if we were to go to sets, our new live set shows up here. And if I were to download that instead, Our customization for a custom pad will show up in this downloaded live set. So as we see here, I changed it to this different oscillator type with a bit more shape and there was some noise. So all these customizations show up here. And indeed, if you want to check out any of the other instruments and how they're configured on the move, setting up a live set and then downloading it will give you all the settings for the built-in presets. This is also a convenient way for you to create your own uh, preset bundles as well. So now we have synth piano preset here, which was created for the move, but this can act as a nice base preset for you to work from. So we can save this as a standard Ableton preset, and we can also export it as a custom preset. So I hope you found it useful. And if anything changes on how to create custom presets, I'll make a follow up video. And I hope to see some awesome new presets coming up. And with that, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Please like and subscribe. And yeah, make some great music. Cheers.